hello and welcome to Lake to Lake, a news show about Bellevue. I'm Robin Hasseth with Bellevue Parks and Community Services. This month we'll take a look back at the top stories we've shared over the past year. From the city's first minority mayor to a mudslide on Westlake Sammamish Parkway. From the biennial sculpture exhibition to what has become an annual occurrence, a state championship for the Bellevue High School football team. 2012 was another eventful year in our city. On January 2nd of last year, Conrad Lee was selected by his fellow council members to serve a two-year term as Bellevue's mayor. The council also chose Jennifer Robertson as deputy mayor. Lee, who was born in China, became the first member of an ethnic minority to be mayor of Bellevue. I'm very grateful uh, to the people of Bellevue who have five times elected me uh, to serve them. And I'm honored to be uh, trusted by my fellow council members to be the mayor of Bellevue, to lead the city for the next two years. Bellevue is a wonderful place with wonderful people. Uh, it's one of the most vibrant and diverse cities in the state and the country. I'm proud to represent you. The best is yet to come. On the same night, John Stokes was sworn in as Bellevue's newest city council member following his election the previous November. In the spring, it was time for Bellevue's yearly Peamouth minnow migration in Kelsey Creek. Wendy Harefield with the Utilities Department has the story. Each spring, thousands of native fish called Peamouth suddenly appear in Kelsey Creek. Peamouth are Lake Washington fish that come to the stream to spawn. For 24 to 48 hours, masses of Peamouth deposit millions of sticky little eggs near rocks in the stream. Then, as quickly as they came, the Peamouth returned to Lake Washington. In about a week, the Peamouth eggs hatch in Kelsey Creek and the juveniles become an excellent food source for other fish and wildlife. One of the best places to see Peamouth each spring is in Kelsey Creek near the Wilburton Trestle. Last summer, the city of Bellevue restored the site to improve fish passage. How we restore habitat for fish passage varies at each site. Here at this culvert near the Wilburton Trestle, way too much water was going through the small side of the culvert during low flow. We needed more of a main channel, so all the jagged riprap rocks were removed and replaced with wonderful smooth cobble for salmon, large boulders, and the habitat was made even more diverse with large root wads and logs. Now when it rains, more flow is going through this main channel, which will allow salmon, pea mouth, and other animals to get upstream much easier through this point. It will be very interesting to see how the Peamouth minnows react to this restoration this spring. Peamouth spend only about a day or two in Kelsey Creek, so they're easy to miss. If you want to know the best places to see Peamouth, sign up for Peamouth Alerts, or join the Peamouth Patrol, visit the city's website at bellevuewa.gov slash Peamouth. A winter mudslide on Westlake Sammamish Parkway caused a huge mess, closing the heavily traveled road and damaging four homes. A detour was put in place, but the impact was severe, since more than 11,000 motorists travel the parkway on a typical day. City utilities and transportation crews went to work fixing the road and a broken water main. By April, the important north-south arterial was reopened. Have you ever wondered what it'd be like to walk amid the treetops? In May, a new feature at the Bellevue Botanical Garden gave visitors a chance to find out. Here's my report from the opening of the Ravine Garden Experience. There's a new experience open at the Bellevue Botanical Garden. And it is called the Ravine Experience, Take a Walk on the Wild Side. And it's the opportunity for the public to experience a, about a five acre parcel in a totally natural condition without anything having been planted in it other than native species. They will access it across a 150 foot long, five foot wide suspension bridge that will take them above this ravine, going on top of and through a forested canopy. And then they'll have a trail to walk on, around, and ultimately back out of the ravine. And it will give them an opportunity to see what a, an intact, uh, about a hundred year old, a native forest looks like, smells like. The bridge is located in a five-acre section of the southwest corner of the Bellevue Botanical Garden, 
and the recent grand opening celebration attracted hundreds of people who all wanted to take part in the Ravine Garden experience. This project is so exciting for the city and for the garden because it's a tremendous example of what we can accomplish when a lot of people come together to work on a vision. Last summer, Bellevue welcomed more than 5,400 new residents into the city after annexing four neighborhoods in South Bellevue. In July, the city threw a party for residents of the Eastgate, Tamara Hills, and Horizon View neighborhoods. The new additions bring the total population in Bellevue to about 130,000 residents. The city's biennial sculpture exhibition, which began last summer and ran into the fall, celebrated transformation. Here's a look back. Bellwether 2012 Regeneration is the 11th edition of Bellevue's Biennial Sculpture Exhibition. I think the art exhibition is a really good idea because we want to raise more public awareness for our education in our schools and just having this out here for everybody to enjoy would be a really great way for people to get to know more about art. The sculpture exhibition started 20 years ago with a dozen artworks and has grown over time. Presented by the City of Bellevue Public Art Program, Bellwether 2012 places compelling, high-quality sculptures in public places for the enjoyment of all. This year, 44 sculptures and installations, plus a teen project, are located at City Hall, in Downtown Park, and at points in between. Bellwether 2012 kicked off with an opening celebration at City Hall on July 13th. It was really hard to financially support the exhibit on our own with the funding that the city was able to provide. And so two years ago, for the first time, we went out and we sought support from members of the community, from you, from our businesses, from our residents. And to all of you who have done anything to support this exhibition, this tremendous community event, thank you so much from the council, the mayor, and everyone in the city. A three-person panel of arts professionals selected work for the sculpture exhibition from 252 entries. Submissions came from 112 artists from across North America. Bellwether is a, it's a great kind of public art exhibition that I think the expansiveness of it, the way it integrates itself into the city is fantastic. The more I learned, the more I liked, uh, the more I was jazzed to actually be submitting work. For several years, sustainability has been the theme of the sculpture exhibition. This time around, the Bellevue Arts Commission, which guides the event, was impressed by 2010 census figures showing how much Bellevue's population has changed. The commission invited artists to submit works that addressed the question, how does a city that has experienced so much change remake or regenerate itself in a sustainable way? The exhibition is um, a big contributor to what makes the downtown a really vibrant place where people want to go. It's not here all the time, so when it's in, there's a feeling of specialness and anticipation and excitement. It really makes Bellevue a special place that has something unique. The sculptures and installations in the exhibition offer a broad range of materials and ideas that address the question of regeneration. The thing I like about this piece is it uh, has a lot of interlocking pieces that work together. Uh, I'm an engineer by trade, so I was naturally kind of attracted to this piece. Having an art exhibition in Bellevue, I, I think it's a great idea, um, first of all, because it brings a lot of diversity to the city and to um, kind of build up the uh, cultural awareness of, of this young city. Bellwether 2012 runs through October 21st. For more information online about the sculpture exhibition, visit www.bellevuewa.gov slash bellwether2012. Also, free walking maps and catalogs are available in the lobby of City Hall. I've been so excited about it. And when I read that the opening was tonight, I insisted, my husband, I said, this is what we're gonna do tonight. This is our Friday night date. And I love that there are so many in here under cover, and then I wanna do the walking tour where I can I can see the rest of them, so I just think it's tremendous. We just moved here a year ago, and we're in love with Bellevue. I had no idea so many wonderful things happened here. 
Attractions like Bellwether 2012 are among the reasons that Money Magazine named Bellevue one of America's best small cities last year. It ranked number 40, marking the fourth straight time Bellevue has cracked the magazine's top 100 list. Finally, we celebrate the Bellevue High School football team, which recently won its fifth consecutive state championship and its 10th title in 12 years. Congratulations to the players, coaches, and fans of the Bellevue Wolverines on another fine season. Heading into this year's football season, the Bellevue High School Wolverines were reigning state champions. In fact, the team had held that title for nine of the past 11 seasons, and many wondered if this year's team was the best ever. We spoke with Seattle Times reporter Jason Jenks about the secrets to their success. The thing that I keep hearing about is their defense. Um, they've given up 69 points all season uh, against 12 Washington opponents. It's, it's a dominant defense. It's the best defense in the state. I don't think there, anyone would argue that. When you kind of match high school teams, one thing people look for a lot is how dominating a defense is because offenses normally are always going to be pretty good in high schools. But, but having a really dominant defense is what separates good teams from great teams. And Bellevue's just always such a traditionally good team, especially under their coach, Butch Goncharoff. I like the teaching part of it. I enjoy seeing kids develop. I think that's a, that's a cool thing. You know, li life's not easy sometimes, and, and, and football's not either. It's not always state championships and wins. It's, uh, there's a lot of hard lessons along the way. Well, coach Gontra is one of the best coaches I've ever had. Uh, I mean, he really stresses all the little things and makes sure we're perfect. And if we're not doing uh, up to our full capacity and reaching our ceiling, then he's going to make sure that we're doing that. He's taught me the little things matter. You know, the little things, that, uh, not just in football, but in life. You know, you have to go through every little thing and make sure you put 100% effort in it. And uh, it basically comes down to that working hard and, you know, keeping a close-knit group of people. Coach Butch Goncharoff also credits the Greater East Side Junior Football Program, serving youth ages 8 to 14. I think it's the most important role. Obviously, I coached in the junior program for years. And, and you know what? There's no middle school athletics here. It's always been a mystery to me, and we don't have them here. So our club stuff and what we do in the junior program is vital to our success. And these little kids grow up, and they believe, of, you know, they dream of being Wolverines, and and, uh, and we, we foster that for all it's worth. Coach Goncharoff is also proud of his athletes' academic success. Our team has been in the top five in the state in team GPA. I've rarely had a kid not succeed in college. And I think that's the one thing we take pride in. That's the goal for any coach. It's not, it's not a state championship. You know, it, it's getting the most out of what you have. It's, it's about playing to your potential and getting the most out of what your team can do. And that starts on the practice field. It's a family atmosphere. Uh, you get to hang out with your best friends every day, come out, and, you know, we, we win. And we win by working hard and, you know, working as a team. So you kind of grow as you get older and see all the, all the little things that play into it, such as the community and, you know, all the things that put into Bellevue High School football. And I enjoy all the things that have nothing to do with Friday night. I enjoy the the practices and the weight room and the helping kids get into college and I enjoy all that stuff. I coach because I want the kids to understand what they're getting out of it. They matter to me. After an undefeated season, Bellevue met Eastside Catholic in the state finals and they won the game with a score of 35 to 3. People always ask for the secret and, oh, what's this? And it's a magical deal and it's the wing tee offense. Or When you have a group of kids that are committed to each other and don't care about who gets credit or how many yards I get or how many titles, or my name was in the paper and they're working together for something, that's pretty cool. And we foster that. And I don't see other programs doing all that. And now, Take a look at some upcoming January events. From January 4th through the 13th, take free fitness classes at South Bellevue Community Center. The Community Center is turning seven years young and invites you to attend a variety of free classes, including indoor cycling, Zumba, boot camp, post rehab strength and conditioning, yoga, jazzercise, line dancing, and more. The free classes are offered for ages 13 and up. 
For more information, call 425-452-4240. Enjoy Park Ranger Lead Hikes on January 5th at Lewis Creek Park and on January 19th at Coal Creek Park. Hikes vary in time and length. Walkers are encouraged to dress for the weather, bring water, and wear sturdy shoes. For more information, call 425-452-4195. On January 8th, come to the New Year's Dance from 2 to 4 p.m. at the North Bellevue Community Center. The dance is open to ages 18 and older, and the cost is $3 at the door. For more information, call 425-452-7681. On January 26, come to the free Natural Start Preschool Open House from 10 a.m. to noon at the Northwest Arts Center. Find out about a unique program that combines kindergarten readiness with experiences in nature, creative art, and healthy living. For more information, visit www.naturalstartpreschool.com or call 425-452-4106. And on January 27th, learn about coal mining at Cougar Mountain. The event runs 2 to 4 p.m. at the Lewis Creek Visitor Center. It's hosted by the Eastside Heritage Center and explores Bellevue's coal mining history. The event is free and no pre-registration is required. For more information, call 425-452-4195. That's our Year in Review show. We hope 2012 was a good one for you and that 2013 is even better. For more information about featured segments, please visit us online at BellevueWA.gov. I'm Robin Hassep. Thanks for watching this edition of Lake to Lake.